She said, don't lie to me, man of God. Have you ever felt like you had a promise that seemed impossible to you? The man told her, by this time next year, you're going to have a son. And the first thing out of her mouth was, don't lie to me, man of God. Don't lie to me. Have you ever said, God, don't you see my situation? Don't you see my circumstances? Don't you see my surroundings? You got that little Mexican up there telling me how great my life's going to be, but I am living in hell right now. You, you got this man talking about prosperity and restoration, and my family's falling apart and I'm broke. And you, God, I don't believe that that applies to me. Have you ever asked yourself, God, have you forgotten who you're talking to? I've asked God that before. I've always said, God, I don't, I don't think that applies to me. I, I didn't grow up like they grew up, and I didn't have what they had. And, and God, I don't think that I can take that because I know where I've been. I know what I've done. So that might be applicable to everybody else around me. But God, you must not see where I've been. This is what she was thinking. That's what she was thinking. Do you see my situation? Her mind was set on where she's been. Her mind was set on how many times they've tried to have kids and failed. Her mind was set in the past. You can never grab hold of your destiny as long as you're holding on to your past. You can never push and get what God has in store for you until you release your fear. You can never have your accomplishments until you release the fact that, you know what, I failed time and time again. But I came to tell somebody, even though you fail time and time again, when God gives you a promise, his promise is for you. You can't hold on to the fact that you failed time and time again. Hold on to the fact that God gave you a promise. It was all in her mind. Her mind was set on the inadequate of life. Her mind was set on the fact that I've tried and failed. Her mind was set on I don't have enough money to start my business. Her mind was set on my, my relationship is broken already and it can't be fixed. Her mind was set on my kids are going crazy and I don't know what else to do with them so I'm done. Her mind was set on her past mistakes and her past failures and her past inadequacies. But in order to get the impossible from God, you've got to renew your mind. You've got to change the way you think about the things that you're thinking about right now. You've got to renew your mind. We read in the opening text, do not conform to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It might seem impossible whenever God gives you a promise, but when I look over my life, it would seem impossible back then to see myself standing here before you this morning because of what I've been through and what I've seen. But when I look back over there, I say, God, you were faithful the whole time. And you knew I would be standing here on December 30th, 2012, decreeing your gospel when I was locked up in Tarrant County and when I was locked up in Dallas County. God, you had a plan the whole time. And I came to tell somebody that even though it seems impossible to you, all things are possible for God, and all things are possible to them who believe. Do I have any believers this morning? You can have it if you believe it. You can have it. He, he, was, he was with me when I was locked up. He's with me today, and I know he'll be with me tomorrow. God is God, and he has a plan for each one of you. It might seem impossible, but all things are possible with God. See, God was with me when my business failed. God was with me when my family was falling apart. God has been with me throughout every crisis in my life. God was with you when you lost your house. God was with you when you lost your marriage. God was with you when you lost your job. But if he was with you then, he'll be with you today. And if he was faithful to you then, he'll be faithful to you tomorrow. tomorrow. You made it through 2012, and I came to tell you, you look back over what happened to you in 2012, and you can stand boldly and say, I made it. I made it, and you know what? Because I made it, I'm stronger. Because I made it, I'm wiser. Because I made it, I'm better. I made it through this situation, and I made it through 2012. And here's the beautiful thing. Because you made it, God says, I'm going to bless you for fighting through it. I'm going to bless you for not quitting. I'm going to bless you for keeping on and persevering. I have blessings in store for you. Why? Because you made it. Somebody say, I made it. I made it. I made it. The enemy tried to kill some of you, but you made it. The enemy tried to discourage some of you, but you made it. You made it this far. And when you look back over your life, look at all the things you made it through. And listen, God had a plan for you the whole time the enemy was fighting you. The whole time it seemed like you were getting beat down and, and tore out from the floor up. 
and beat up on the feet up. God had a plan the whole time that said, you're going to get through this. God said, he'll never put more on you than you can handle and that you can bear. So if you're putting up with stuff and going through problems, I came to tell you, you can handle it. You're stronger than you think you are. You're smarter than you think you are. You're wiser. You God said, if you're in the middle of a storm, you can handle this storm that you're going through. If you're in the middle of an indecision in your life, God says, I'm going to give you wisdom to carry you through it. If you're worried about a crisis that's going, God said, I'm leading you through this crisis, and there is a blessing at the end. There is a blessing for you at the end of your storm. And so whoever you are this morning, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but 2012 was quite the storm for somebody. But because you made it through, God says, I have a blessing in store for you. When I think about what the Lord has done for me, my soul, my heart, my mind says, hallelujah. I look back over my life and I say, God, you were faithful. God is still doing the impossible today. He's always working things out for your good. We sing a song at the church that says, you make all things work together for my good. I want you to know that whatever thing is in your life, God will make that thing, depression, anxiety, uh, divorce, uh, financial depression, all these things, God has a way of making good things out of your bad situation. We serve a good God who can do anything. See, this lady got a promise from a man of God, and she said, don't lie to me. She started thinking with her old mind. I know what I've done. I know what I've been. I know what I've tried to do. And it didn't work. But there comes a point in time when you have to start thinking about, you know what? My old thinking ain't got me anywhere in life. My old thinking has got me to where I am today. But the Bible says that you can renew your mind. That you can think things that God says about you and act on them and great things, impossible things will happen for you. So listen, I've determined for myself in 2013, I'm not going to go through the same stuff I went through in 2012. I'm not going to, I already fought them old fights in 2012. I don't want to go backwards and fight them again. I can't even tell somebody this morning, don't go backwards. You've already fought enough to, to get to where you are today. Don't go backwards and pick up the same fight. If you gave up smoking in 2012, don't go backwards and start trying to quit smoking again. If you gave up dope in 2012, don't go back in, in 2013 and start smoking that dope again. I came to tell you today, if you've come this far to go back, if God brought you this far and he's taking you through a process, don't restart the process in your life. Just because life happens, don't have to drive you to do things that you've quit already done. I, I challenge you to quit fighting in your family. Quit fighting in your house. Quit fighting with your kids. Quit fighting in your kids. Your God, is, God is a story in your home. And every time when you come home in a bad mood and you snap at them kids, all of a sudden you regress and go back to where you, and then you got to be, God, I need you to bail me out. My kids ain't talking to me again. My kids are mad at me. My kids are acting crazy again. And God said, you're the one that came to snap that and push them back into their own room because they don't want to be around you anymore. You're always griping at them and now you're just pushing them away. God said, I brought you this far and you snapped at them and sent them back. Quit going backwards, mom. Quit going backwards. Quit going backwards. You've got to say, you know what, God? I am totally committed to pursuing the purpose that you placed in my life. Yeah. And you know what? If I have to look at things from a whole different mindset, see, i got to line up my mind with the mind of Christ. What God created me to be, i got to line up my mind with what he created me to be. He said, I, I created you to be a man of God, to lead your house, to lead your family. I created you to lead a church. And I've got to put my mindset that says, you know what? In spite of everything that's going on around me, I've got to set my mind on what God has called me to do. Because if not, I'll lose traction chasing distractions that the enemy sends my way. Never lose traction in your life by chasing distractions that the enemy sends your way. The enemy is going to send distractions your way. He's going to send opportunities that God didn't send your way. He's going to send people in your life that God didn't send you. But never lose focus on your attraction and lose traction by chasing distractions. God has a plan for you and as long as you stay focused on what God has for you, you can accomplish what he has but don't lose traction chasing distractions. Somebody say that. Don't lose traction. Don't lose traction. Don't lose traction. You've got to follow what God has for you. <laughs> See, your mind has to be right. Your mindset has to be right. 
You have to set your mind on the things of God. See, Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. I refuse to keep the mentality of my history while reaching for my destiny. I, I've made up my mind. I'm not going to doubt God's promises for me. Have you ever doubted a promise from God? Have you ever just doubted a promise from God? Just, God, come on, really? Really, God? Seriously. You, know, you, you know who you're talking to, right? You know who you're talking to, right, God? Really? You going to really do that for me? Come on, God, you're joking, right? I, 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 I've told God, God, come on, really? You're going to really do that in my life? You're going to do that, and now I'm sitting back saying that he's done it? You're going to use me, or you're going to touch me, or you're going to restore things to me? Yeah, right, God, that's crazy. Well, God does a lot of crazy stuff. You have to have your mind ready for the promise, though. This woman didn't have her mind ready for what the man of God told her. You're going to have a son. She didn't have her mind ready for the promise. But you have to be ready for when God tells you things. You have to be ready to receive what God tells you. I, I don't have time to be depressed because I got to go what God has for me to do and do what God do what God asked me to do. I don't have time to be angry and frustrated because God has a plan for me. I, I, this is the day I was saying this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. But I believe that this is the year that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in this year. See, your mind is a weapon. The Bible says it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. That's Romans seven twenty five. That's why the enemy is after you. That's why the enemy is, 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 is coming up against you. That's why the devil is fighting you so hard. Because he knows that if you get in your mind that the promises of God do apply to you, he's in trouble. If you, if you truly believe that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper, then the enemy is in trouble. If you believe that, that you are more than a conqueror and get in your mind, that, then the enemy is in trouble. If you believe that God is going to prosper you this year and you truly believe it, the enemy is in trouble. See, everything happens in your mind first. Everything and this morning, I, 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 didn't, I, I woke up and my mind said, you've got to get up out of bed. <clears throat> my mind did it first. Everything that you're ever going to do in life all starts with your mind. Every day. If you're going to come out of debt, if you come out of debt in your mind. If you're going to restore your family, you restore your family in your mind. If you're going to raise your kids right, you start raising the kids right in your mind. It's all about renewing your mind. If you're going to be successful in school and in college, it all starts in your mind. Everything that you'll ever want to do, everything you see on the stage, the chair you're sitting in, be started in somebody's mind. And if you get your mind right, God says you can do anything. If you get your mind right, you can accomplish anything. If you change the way you think about things and see things and speak to things, things will change if you change your mind. Amen. Things will change if you change. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. God said, I will do a new thing, a new thing in you. Will you not see it? God has plans for you in 2013. Never let your old mentality be louder than the voice of your new mind. See, you've got to get out of your mindset and start remembering the dreams that God gave you, remembering the hope that God gave you, remembering the goals that God gave you. Here's what I want you to think about for just a second. This lady, she had no son, had no child, and uh, this man asked her, what do you want? She didn't want nothing. She didn't, in her mind, wake up that day and say, I want to have a son. She didn't think that. I came to tell you today that as this year, see this servant, he spoke up for her and told the man of God what she wanted. There are people in your life that are going to say things and speak things into your life that you didn't expect. This was an unexpected miracle for her. She, she didn't know about it. She didn't pray about it. She didn't think about it. And this next year, I, I, I promise, I prophesy, I decree, whatever you want to think about I know that there is going to be some unusual things happen in your life that God is going to bless you in ways that you ain't ever heard about. 
that you ain't ever thought about. That he's going to set things in motion today that are going to come upon you and, and, and you're not going to know where they came from. He's going to put opportunities in your life that you didn't even know were in your life. He's going to put jobs in front of you that you didn't even qualify for last year, but he's going to put them in front of you. He's going to bring people back into your life that you thought left you and were done with you. He's going to put them back in your life. Why? Because God is a God that will do the impossible and he'll perform miracles in your life because he loves us. He loves us so much that he will create people. He will put things in our life that will totally catch us off guard. There is a blessing in store for you in 2013 you ain't even prayed about yet. God's going to meet your needs before the need even comes up. God's going to provide for you before the, the need ever happens because he loves you so much. And in 2013, if you will let God be God in your life, I challenge you and I want you to sit back and watch. By this time next year, you'll be farther in life. You'll be more blessed than you are this morning. Your family will be whole again. And your job will be more profitable. You'll have more money in your bank. By this time next year, I decree that healing will be in your life. That you'll be able to walk in peace and in love with your family. The ones that are done, the ones that just want to say, I don't want to even be around that crazy aunt, that crazy uncle that said, I don't want to talk to you again. God said, I want to bring them back into your life. It's because he loves us so much. If you just begin to change the way you think about things and watch what God does, I promise that by this time next year, you will be light years ahead of where you are today. And by this time next year, there will be a blessing. This He, he, he said, you're going to have a baby to a lady whose husband was old. He, God's going to send something out of some people that they're going to bless you and they weren't even equipped to bless you. They're going to fulfill promises in your life that they weren't even equipped. This man couldn't do what needed to be done to have a baby, but God says, I'm going to still provide a baby for you. God will make the impossible possible. He'll make the dead things alive again just to get you the promise that he promised you. If you, you believe that this morning, listen, I want you to know that there are blessings in store for you you ain't even heard about yet. You ain't even thought about yet. See, it says in 2 Kings 4, 17, but the woman became pregnant, just like the prophet said. She changed her mind in the process. She changed her mind in the process. It doesn't, it doesn't give us details, but we don't need details. She became pregnant. He said it. She doubted it for a little bit. But there was a process within that year that where she said, you know what? He is old. And he can't function like he used to function. But we're going to still try. I came to tell somebody today, keep on trying. Keep on pushing. Keep on, keep on walking. It, it, yeah, it seems impossible. There came a point in her mind where she said, you know what? It is impossible. But we're going to give it a shot. Keep on swinging at that thing. You want to start a business? Keep on trying. You want to start, you want a new job? Keep on trying. You want a whole family? Keep on trying. This lady had a mind change in the middle of the story, in the middle from her promise through the process. There came a point where fulfillment had to happen. And she said, I am going to get what this man said, and I'm going to do what I need to do to get what God said I can do. God has plans for you, and if you'll just start doing what you can do, God will start doing what he can do. If you'll start, hey, you know what? If you just start serving a little bit more, God said, i got a plan for you. I'm going to bless you. All you got to do is just go through the process. I'm going to say process. Never lose hope in the process. Never give up in the process because you never know how close you are to the fulfillment. Never, never throw your hands and say, I'm done with this. I'm finished with this. I don't want to do it anymore because you could be on the point. You could be on the New Year's Eve of by this time next year. It, it, it didn't matter what date it was. God says by this time next year, you will have the impossible. By this time next year, you will be everything thing that I created you to be. By this time next year, you will be a good parent. By this time next year, you will be a good student. By this time, there's a process though. He didn't say by January 1st at midnight, everything's going to change for you. No. He said by this time next year, don't lose hope when things take longer than you expect them to take. Great things take time. And as long as you keep on holding on to what God has for you, it'll come through. See, if God gave you a promise, which he did, and he has a plan for your life, which he does, 
It's just a matter of time before it's fulfilled. Each one of you have a dream. Each one of you have a goal. Each one of you have a calling and an anointing. Now we try and hide it and hide from it sometimes. But God has placed ministries inside of each one of you. God has placed, you have ministries just bubbling inside of you. And you, and you can feel it sometimes. You can feel like God is really calling you to do something great. And we God, that's not me. You can't use me. Look at where I've been. Look at what I've done. God is saying that I called you. I have a plan for you. And I knew you were going to mess up. But I still called you. I still have a plan for you. So you're going to need God in 2013. You're going to need him to restore you. You're going to need him to renew your mind. You're going to need him to pull your mind and your emotions all back together. You're going to need him to restore your thinking and your thought process. You're going to need God to really revolutionize the way you see yourself. Because a lot of times we don't accomplish things because we don't see ourselves capable of doing them. But this morning, what I want you to know is that God, this lady had a baby. She did have a baby. And it was an amazing thing for this old woman to have a baby. God did it. And God will do it for you. I'm reminded of a, of a, of a story. Uh, most of us know it. It's the prodigal son story. It's the prodigal son story. And uh, I'm going to finish with this. But there was a son who took everything that his dad had for him. His, 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 his birthright. All the money that was due him. And he went. He lost it. And, you know, crazy living. Partying and, and, and just doing whatever he was doing with it. He lost everything. He came from a palace and went backwards and found himself in a pig pen eating what pigs eat. Just laying there with pigs. And the Bible says that he looked around and saw what he was surrounded by and remembered where he came from. It says he came to himself. He got his mind right. And it says, when he came to himself, he said, I will go to my father's house. There's some of you in here this morning that, yeah, you know what, you've got a plan, you're pushing towards your goals, but there's some other of us that have went backwards. And we were here, and life happened, and discouragement, and broken promises by the people, and betrayal, and heartbreak, and life, and now we find ourselves over here with an old, bad mindset. But the Bible says that this boy looked around and said, I will go back to my father's house. He says when he came to his mind, his right mind, he said, I will go back. This morning, God wants to renew your mind to bring you back to where you're supposed to be. He wants you to take your rightful place in the kingdom of God, where he, where he had for you this whole time. Yeah, you went back and you wasted it. You, you messed up a lot. But God says, even though you find yourself surrounded by what you find yourself surrounded in, I still call you my son. I still call you my daughter. And in spite of where you are in life or what you're doing and what you've done, I will take you back a hundred times again. God has said, he said, I'll, I'll go back to my father's house. And his father looked at him and said, I know where you've been. I know what you did, but I'm going to still give you a robe and I'm going to make a feast for you. This morning as you go into 2013, in the next few days, I want you to know that it don't matter where you are. God sees you and he accepts you and he forgives you and he loves you and he'll take you just the way you are. And he'll not yeah. only really give you back what was rightfully yours, but he'll give you stuff that you didn't even deserve. He'll do the impossible in your life. He'll give you things that nobody else thought you could have because he loves you. Because he cares about you. And if you'll just focus on you, the fact that you are a child of God, and you can still come back home. If you come back home, God says, I will open my house up to you, and you can take advantage of everything in this kingdom. Prosperity, deliverance, healing for your emotions, and healing for your home, restoration, healing in your body. God says, whatever it is that you see in this house is yours. Because you're still his kid. You're still a child of God. And if you go into this next year, it's easy to take advantage of everything that God has in store for you. By this time next year, I want you to start thinking about what you expect God to do. Where do you see yourself by this time next year? 
What do you see happening in your life by this time next year? Think about it for just a second. What do you see? What do you want by this time next year? Want a husband? Want education? You want restoration? You want financial peace in your mind, peace in your home? What do you want by this time next year? Here's the thing. The Bible says God gives us the desires of our heart. And whatever it is you just thought about, it wasn't you wanting it. God gives you those desires. And if God gives you those desires, he'll give you every opportunity and every avenue to accomplish that thing you just thought about. That thing that entered your mind just now. God put that thought in your mind. That wasn't you. That wasn't selfishness. God put that thought. Want your family back? Want your, your kids saved? You want your family restored? You want your finances and your future taken care of? God says, I put that thought in your mind. You want to break certain addictions? I put that thought in your mind. Whatever it is you just thought about, that wasn't you thinking. God put that in your mind. And he has a promise for you that by this time next year, you will have the fulfillment of that promise. Let's all stand up this morning. Dear Lord Father, you know who needs you in 2013. We all do. You know who needs healing. You know who needs to change their mind. You know who needs restoration in their family. You know who needs whatever it is they need, God. Father, but you said in your word that it is you who provides for us. You are Jehovah Jireh. And so this morning, God, I speak to everybody in this building. And I tell them, you need Jesus in your life. You need God to walk with you in this next season that you're in. You need God to be with you. You need God to accomplish the impossible. You need God to restore your mind. You need God to restore your family. You need God to restore your hopes and your dreams. You need God. If you need God this morning, I want to pray with you. And there's people in this room that want to pray with you. If you need God to guide you to through, to, to through, through 2013, I'm calling God this morning. Make your way to the front right now. And we're going to pray and believe that God strengthen you. That God walk with you. That God be with you. That God bless you. That God heal you. You need Him. No, you know you need Him. You know you need Him in this next coming season. Hey, you've been beat up enough in 2012. God said, let me fight for you in 2013. You've been beat down and hurt too much in 2012. So God said, you made it through, and now I want to be with you. You made it through that, and now I want to walk with you. You made it through that, and now I want to fight and provide for you. You need God this morning. You need God as you go into this next year to say, I will fight your battle for you. I will hold you at night. I will speak of you, speak to you when you're lonely. I will tell you that you are a great and mighty person, that I have a plan for you. I will bless you. Everything I want to tell you.
Yeah.